Hello, everybody. This lovely afternoon for some and deep, dark night for others. Um, and uh, I'm Mark Lipovetsky, professor of uh, the Department of Slavic Languages at Columbia University. And with the uh, Harriman Institute, we are opening the evening or afternoon, depending on where you are, with uh, Masha Stepanova. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, those who uh, are watching us right now through Zoom or through YouTube, uh, they know who Masha Stepanova is, but uh, it is an honor and pleasure for me to introduce her. And I tr will try not to steal too much time from her, but but uh, say what I would like to say about her, just just a few short words. Uh, so Maria Stepanova is a poet, uh, prose writer, essayist, uh, journalist, uh, editor, um, author of a dozen of uh, poetry collections and three books of prose, which she she called essay, uh, maybe more now, I don't, I don't know, maybe that's the the, not updated information, but at least three books of prose, uh, one of which, uh, Pamiti, uh, Pamiti, or In Memory of Memory, uh, has won a number of very important literary awards, uh, such as uh, NOS uh, and uh, Bolshaya Kniga, book, book, uh, big book, and uh, uh, the, the prize, mm, Brücke Berlin for, for the best uh, book in translation in German, together with the translator Olga Radetzka. And those of you who are following our events remember how we were uh, debating this book among the uh, best books of the decade at the Super NOS event last February. Uh, uh, Maria Stepanova is, uh, first became known as, as the poet and uh, sort of uh, her, her fame as the prose writer followed, but she manages to keep the balance between her uh, poetic and prose wings. And uh, as far as I know, the new book of poetry is in the making. And Marsha told me that she will be reading poems from this new uh, book and uh, her, her poetry also won a number of very prestigious uh, prizes uh, including uh, the prize of Andrei Biele, uh, the prize uh, of uh, the fund of Hubert Burde for the best young uh, lyrical poet of the Eastern Europe, uh, the prize of uh, Boris Pasternak, the prize of the fund uh, of the Brodsky Memorial Fund and a number of others. Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, Marsha is one of the most profound uh, poets and thinkers in today's Russia, and no wonder uh, such such important critics as uh, Boris Dubin or Mikhail Impolsky uh, dedicated to her work. They are very, very interesting and very deep articles. Um, and uh, for, from, from this... Uh, uh, and, and what is important about her is that uh, not only prose and poetry um, are coexisting in her work, but also sort of a constant interest both to the past and to the present. Uh, if uh, Paimiti Paimiti is the book about memory or rather about post-memory and a book about that, that rather deconstructs uh, the concept of historical memory than then glorifies it, but still it's looking into the past. Uh, in, in her poetry, Marsha constantly reacts in the very um, original and peculiar way to the, uh, to the hot political events. And for instance, her narrative poem, uh, The War of um, Beasts and Animals, uh, that uh, will be soon soon translated uh, or published in translation in English by the British press, Blood X, um, is, is a direct reaction to the war in Ukraine. And uh, in, in many other of her poems, we can see direct reactions to, to her, uh, to, to the current politics and current, current events. Um, I would also uh, like to mention that um, the um, 
English translation of uh, Memory and Memoriam is supposed to appear in, 2000, uh, in, in, in February 2021, so in a few months, if nothing happens. And uh, the uh, Columbia University Press is uh, uh, publishing uh, a book of selections from uh, Masha's prose and poetry edited by Irina Shivilenka. The title is Voiceover. And uh, as Masha just told me, it is uh, planned to appear in May or June. And uh, even more importantly, you all understand how difficult it is uh, now to plan ahead. But so far, so far, uh, we have uh, uh, Masha's scores on uh, the uh, course directory of Columbia University. It is supposed to begin uh, in the end of March and last for one month. And the title of this course is Between History and Story, Post Memory. Uh, and uh, I hope that this course will happen uh, in spring 21 and uh, that, that Marsha will be able to, to come here to New York. Of course, if, if our life remains as difficult as it is now, we'll push it forward, but, but uh, this will happen sooner or later. We have been postponing it uh, already since uh, it was initially planned for the fall uh, 2020. So, so uh, the plan of this event is the following. So I, I, I ask a few questions uh, uh, based mainly on, on uh, Marsha's recent essays, then, then Marsha kindly agreed to, to give uh, some poetic reading in Russian, and then uh, she will be answering your questions. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to see such, such a robust audience. Uh, we have quite a group of people. Uh, please feel free to um, type your questions in if you are on Zoom through uh, Q&A function. If you are um, watching us on YouTube, uh, please use chat function and I will try to process them all to, to Masha. Um, all right. Uh, and uh, so, uh, Masha, the, 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 the first question, this first question uh, sort of follows from what I just said about you looking into two directions simultaneously, if you would agree with this, of course. So on the one hand, uh, quite intensely looking into the past and uh, into forgotten or mi mis misappreciated or non-appreciated figures of the past, right? Uh, and on the other hand, very much um, looking into the present, into the political present, into the sort of um, hear, hearing the wind of the, uh, of the COVID, right? To, 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 to say it quite metaphorically, not only given the, uh, your, your recent essay about uh, war without the enemy, that is directly about COVID. So, so uh, this, this double vision um, suggests a, um, a certain historicity as the part of your approach to, to life and literature. Uh, and I understand that that's not an, uh, an easy question and it's not easy to, to answer it, but from your experience, so what is unique about our historical experience. If, look, if, if you would look at us, and by us, I mean us uh, within the last uh, 20, 30, 50 years, depending on what, you, uh, what range you want to cover, or maybe just last, last uh, 20 years, uh, we, we live through the first two decades of the 21st century. So, so what do you see unique about us as historical subjects? Uh, that's a question. Well, first of all, uh, uh, let me uh, express my gratitude for inviting me uh, and uh, for your kind words. I'm, I'm deeply honored and pleased to be here. And I'm truly looking forward to my time at Columbia. Uh, whenever it happens, uh, I really long to go somewhere not even speaking of uh, all the possible conversations. So fingers crossed, uh, we'll be hoping we'll be able to do it in March. 
Uh, and uh, now to your question. Uh, I, uh, first of all, I kind of hesitate uh, defining this us because what kind of us we are supposed to be describing the Slavists, uh, the Slavs, yeah. the uh, post Soviet, uh, the, the, the people living in the post Soviet space or the humanity. Uh, it is such a su such a huge uh, such a huge thing to describe, uh, and uh, uh, one can start, and uh, maybe we'll finish starting in in the two hours we have for for, for, for this uh, small talk and uh, reading. But uh, uh, of course, one cannot help noticing things, and uh, things are happening and changing around us. And uh, what I've been noticing for throughout the last uh, half a year with the start of the pandemic, or maybe a couple of months later, is a sudden shift in the major and the general attitude of uh, people surrounding me, of what I am seeing in the newspapers, on my Facebook stream, on Twitter. Uh, whatever, and uh, well, I've been mm, I've been obsessed with the past for the last forty years, and uh, this obsession is deeply rooted historically, uh, as it happens with with every human being living in the first half of twenty first century, I suppose, because we are all in a way. I, I hesitate using this term, but we are survivors of the 21st century. Every single human being is carrying uh, on her or his shoulders all the weight of uh, huge historical narratives of the 20th century and of the small familial narratives that is, that is hard to put into the general picture. And... Uh, that's uh, a lot of things to have uh, on your hands. And um, we were using the last 50 years to come into terms with this burden or this heritage or this trauma or this problem or this question, uh, whatever one may call it. And uh, until the last year, the whole matter was feeling, at least to myself, as pure electricity. You were touching a name, a detail, an event. You were mentioning something in a small conversation and it immediately caused sparkles. And not only you know, the sparkles of, of a pleasant kind, it was and it still is uh, ground for for discussions or a battlefield. But what I feel now is a sudden shift of shift of tension. Mm -hmm. It is much less as if some balance was shifting. And now we, we were slowly entering the future. And it is quite important. I think, because no one was really interested, uh, well, besides the PR agencies and, uh, and the authors of, of uh, blockbusters of different uh, uh, dystopias, no one was really interested in planning the future, viewing the future as something more or less, well, pleasurable, more or less inviting. The future was a uh, terra incognita, no one wanted to explore. And now, in a way, we are locked down in the time present. And it is quite painful to look back into the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, it is a, a paradise uh, lost, maybe uh, unretrievably lost. So no one wants to... to, 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 to to evocate the memories. Uh, and uh, 
you feel locked in the um, in the small space of of your everyday life, and so creating a future, shaping a future, living in a future, it is becoming a new possibility. And uh, uh, it didn't shape into anything distinctive, but it is interesting, uh, I think it's interesting to put your finger on the exact moment when the past began uh, meaningless and the future suddenly entered. That, that's a very interesting uh, answer because it, in certain way, um, I, I wanted to ask you about this specially, but you already answered. So you wrote in one of your essays, "Предполагая uh, жить," uh, right? That the past is 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 colonizing present and and the future, right? That, that there is a some kind of unhealthy addiction to looking into the past, and that mm, the past and the addiction to the past in in Russian culture, at least in society, serves as the block that that restrains uh, uh, any thinking about, any positive thinking, at least about future, and flattens uh, the present. And so, so, so now you're saying that this lockdown that, that we all live through somehow uh, changed this situation and opened up the window into the future. So, so how do you imagine the future or how do you, um, wh where do you see the, the, the symptoms of this transformation? Could, could you please bring at least one example? Mm. You know, I, I cannot because I don't see the symptoms. What I can see, and uh, I know it sounds very much, um, it sounds very buggy. Uh, the person is telling you that uh, the future is beginning, it, it, it has begun last Sunday and uh, it is not very visible yet, but I feel uh, it is here. It doesn't sound very convincing, but uh, I would say that um, the, the meaningful thing uh, is uh, uh, you can view it in small in small things and small in small details. And uh, when you're following the captions uh, in uh, in uh, the news, in, in newspaper in cartoons, or when you are well uh, vividly avidly reading reading Facebook, what you are seeing is a kind of uh, is a dramatic flair uh, uh, with which people are describing the, the possible future, the future to be. And uh, one of the most often repeated uh, phrases is nothing is going to be the same. The world is going to be different. We are going to get out of lockdown as different brand of humanity. We are going to change utterly. We are already changing. It sounds uh, a bit, well, Kholestakov-like, too, too dramatic, uh, too simplistic. But the, the easygoing attitude, the readiness to go through these changes, even, uh, even in this uh, uh, small talk, uh, horrific story mode, it is already a symptom of, of a certain recognition. People are understanding that, uh, well, uh, uh, that the real 21st century has begun. You remember, uh, начинался не календарный настоящий двадцатый век. The classic, uh, the classic lines from Anna Akhmatova, who was uh, referring to 1914, the year when the First World War began, as the point where the real 20th, the 20th century had began. Uh, 
I I was waiting for the moment when something would happen, something that wouldn't remind us too distinctively of the stories we know well enough from the 21st, uh, from the 20th century history. Something that would have no historical rhymes, no analogies, uh, no, 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 well, long distance mirrors. And uh, when we speak of the pandemic, it is something totally unpredictable. We don't know how to deal with it. We don't have a, any beautiful story to explain us what, what, what is happening to us. And in a way, the things that are going on are deeply humiliating, right? Uh, because of some silly, silly flu, uh, millions of people are getting locked in their houses and uh, sentenced to quite uh, domestic life. And there is nothing grand about uh, about uh, the, the, this necessity. It is just uh, a deeply personal, uh, very physical matter. And uh, it is something we have to, not necessarily to romanticize, but we have to deal with it mentally, culturally. And I suppose that that's just the beginning. Yeah, that's, if this is the beginning of the future, <laughs> no, no, that, that's not what we are looking forward to, but but of course, as the poet, as the poet, you you, you don't need any symptoms. You, you 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 your your feeling is is the best best uh, instrument of the change, and and uh, we are listening to you because because we trust your intuition, your poetic intuition, and I think that 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 th this preface is is quite enough. Uh, uh, for for the audience, which we cannot say and cannot hear, and I suggest that we move to, to to poems because you are already in more or less prophetic uh, position <laughs> now. So it is quite quite normal to start speaking um, in 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 rhymes and in meter speech. So wh why not to do this transition? What do you think? Ah, uh, well, uh, let, let's try. Uh, uh, um... Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I am uh, I am deeply uh, against this brand of uh, prophetic know. poetry. And you know I'm that, joking. Uh, uh, poets make uh, great mistakes, especially good poets. And uh, but still, uh, let's do uh, well. Let's start not with uh, with uh, visualizing uh, visualizing the future, but uh, maybe with a bit of retrospection. And uh, I'll uh, read a couple, maybe four or five poems from the poetry cycle, from the Vainas Veri War of the Beasts and the Animals, uh, because the book is coming out in, uh, in March, uh, and uh, because I, I totally adore Sasha Dugdale's brilliant and innovating, innovative and radical uh, translation. And... Uh, because um, I think that uh, maybe this poem, this um, uh, this poem, these poems can provide an example of this um, um, way of thinking that is feeding upon the past and uh, using the past as uh, building building blocks for creating something new, which is maybe a faulty method of building anything. Uh, and the, the, this huge poem uh, is included in a, in a book a sequence that is named Spoiler, you know the term, uh, spoilers or war trophies, uh, uh, that's a Latin word, which also, which also means a certain mode of, uh, of architectural work, of building something while including into the, into the new composition some pieces, fragments of older constructions. And uh, 
I suppose that's what I've been trying to do with uh, writing uh, these uh, war poems. And uh, here come the eyeglasses. Не на земле, а над или под глухая война идет. Она смазной источает пот и трогает за живот. И мы шарахаемся, себя в темноте неся. И мать Диметра выходит мять ногами туго полей. И снизу слышится вашу мать, а сверху кажется чуть белей. И мать Геката наперекур выходит из тупика. От черных улиц, от черных кур, Из луж разбитого молока Земля лежит вещевым мешком Невзятого языка. И мать Мария бежит пешком, Но нет ее здесь пока. Жизнь, ты прореха, Нуждающаяся в починке. Смерть, ты тесто, Стасковавшееся по начинке. Те, кто держит во рту сперва осторожно головы с глазами. Те, кто трогал в уме газету, как мама учила, не, никогда, и руки отмой. Те, кто рвут на лету, переносят из дома в дом, размазывают по стеклам. Тупорылое тело пробуют установить на колеса и катить, наставляя жерло, поплевывая в направлении те и эти. Но в большей степени эти для них самобранкою новобранцы раскидывают зеленые руки. И им ложатся в ноги тупыми березовыми стволами, чтобы понравиться харня по велению жили, по желанию баяна под побудку аккордеона и о голоса детей, поющих, где было купол в нечистом поле в окружении хлебов и пугал. Uh, that's, by the way, to our previous talk of Zachar Prilepin and uh, his role in the contemporary Russian history. Кто там едет по Васильевскому спуску к храму Василия Блаженного? Страны рады, грады наряжены. На всей моей территории наступает пяти минутка истории Лисицы брешут на заградительные отряды. Комариный стон заглушает звон колокольный. Зайцы-русаки на всех избирательных участках отдают солидарный голос. Тоже и кёсьи-мухи от земли, оторвавшись, осуществляя тактическое окружение. Кто же не хочет тихого дону попить из дедовой кружки? И вернуться назад, утираясь, и на даче мангал заводить, посыпая окрошку укропом, засыпая землей. A uh, small footnote of this text is uh, obviously referring to the tale of uh, Igor's uh, battle, uh, the, 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 a very famous 18th century Russian uh, or classical poem. Uh, a story of a failed uh, military achievement. Um, and this one is based on something completely different. That's uh, T.S. Eliot reloaded uh, in, a, in a different way. Vlas Dobrovolets, две недели как мертвый, забыл курс рубля, и что воробьи говорили, откуда он сам. Взрывная волна взяла его кости в объятия. Пока он летел, годы съезжали с него, обнажая детские щеки, прибарматывая. Ватник или укроп, кто бы ты ни был, на этом заброшенном переезде, вспомни о Власе. Влас был тебя милей. Ты помнишь ли, Мария, наш темный коридор, послевоенную Россию, военный городок, под радиолу танцы смирные на расстоянии руки, 
но золотом и смирной полны товарники, какие люди годные до жизни фронтовой, в твои колени голые стучали головой, как чай светил там ситеч, сич, как чай светил там ситечком, вспотевшим от жары, и под убогим ситчиком железные шары. Ты помнишь, как заплакано стояла у крыльца, когда у Васьки дьякона накрыли под лица, как вели его веселого, оглянувшегося роза, а потом контрольный в голову и газик дал газа, как при звуке выстрела в двери ты вошла, жизнь себя убыстрила, надвое пошла. And uh, here, here we're going through the, through, through a variety of um, songs and films that are referring to the World War II in the Soviet Union. And uh, here, is, here is another one. Uh, starting with uh do, 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 do you need all these footnotes uh, mark do you think it's important or maybe okay so here we are starting with uh with uh pushkin with his uh, famous songs of the western slavs and the poem will be finishing to a reference to the famous uh, speech given by joseph stalin with the beginning of the same world war ii and switching to again to to the uh uh Igor and uh prince Igor and uh his miserable uh tiny war uh по большой наморщенной водичке под вечерней звездою от того бережочка отплывет Деревянный ящик, капитанов на нем не слышно, матросов на нем не видно. Всего и видно, что слабое свечение близится оно к нашему дому. Всего и слышно, что тихое шуршание, будто в трюме, не спит крошиться, пересыпается горсть за горстью, и вода кофизму за кофизмой читает. Потом смывает, потом читает и смывает. Прости меня, прости меня, друг милый, Пускай погибну, не в этом дело. Не беги по берегу за мною, По без дороги ноги сбивая. Не ищи мой деревянный ящик На отмеле в камышатах. Главнее всего не снимай с него крышки, Отрекись, от старого мира, не снимай с меня крышки, не возвращайся к маме, не говори поселом меловыми окаменевшими устами. Дорогие товарищи, братья и сестры, братья и дружины. Учу обойтись без я, но кто без меня обойдется. Я пойдет за тобой. Отсюда до смертного часа Будет стучать тебе в уши, Покуда не скажешь, вот я. Я говорю, не за руль, Не часок скоротать до парома. Это ты говоришь, а не я. Я твой родной язык. У тебя во рту ему тесно? В моем он начал болтать. Пока мы спим. Я думаю о тебе. Пора объясниться. Давай-ка встанем. Земля не умеет встать. Нет у нее дальних и ближних планов. Нет у сознания собственной правоты. Ей себя не жалко. В ответ она не ответит. Не бежит, не лежит. Не делает особенных ошибок. Никого не оставит вовне. Земля открывает рот, не чтобы сказать. Она не мешает себе в 
siebie uderzać. I może być poslednie z tego nabora, and uh, maybe the, 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 the last one uh, from this book, uh, a longish one. Um, если собрать в точку, было сказано вот что. Она не способна говорить за себя, поэтому ею всегда правят другие, потому в ее истории столько повторов и фальсифицируются отжившие формы, и не понять, откуда какая цитата из 30 или 70 -го года потому что она цитирует все одновременно, и не чтобы напомнить, а чтобы наполнить дыры, что особенно жутко. Ее материал, ее мазы, алмазы, каменные пещеры, древесные леса, золотые горы, снежные барсы, пустынные розы, газовые потоки – которые так нужны мировой торговле, ее материал не хочет иметь с ней дело, дает без любви делать с собой, что надо, непонятно, чего ей надо. Где твое я? Почему его не видно? Почему за тебя говорят посторонние люди? Или ты говоришь голосами шутих и трусов, выйди из себя, поставь этот словарь на полку. Она не выходит. Это у нее не выходит. Вот ее огромное пароходство, ширококрылые самолетства, шерстобитные, стали литейные молочные производства, многоокие градостроительные предприятия, ткачихи, поющие над неработающими станками, зоны вольного винопития, Супри, прости, Господи, матические открытия, господа юнкера, автомат Калашникова, большой балет, вытанцующий из загашников, за решеткою призрак убитого летнего сада. Это страна, рай, уснувший в обетиях ада. Пусть она постоит в цвету и постою на этом облетающем ненадолгим розовым цветом с теми, кто на посту, проститутки, белеющие тенями в тенях деревьев на шоссе Ярославском, ослепляемые фарами, подходите к машинам осторожно, как олени к кормушке. Вагон-ресторан, пластиковые ромашки, меню с золотыми буквами на обложке, официантка, укушенная в шею, все, кто говорит, как я еще не умею, Пылевая буря на полустанке, где с тобой не покурим. Протяженность полей, усыренная непокоем. Подполковник в отставке, дальнобойщик в своей кабине. Теперь проверим, действительно ли она высока, как терем. И что свет изгоняет тьму между вытегрой и любанью. Положите мне руку на я, и я уступлю желание. So, how much time did we use for, for this one? And do, do uh, 20 more? minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. And, and you, you should imagine applause here in this, mm -hmm. in this pause, okay? <laughs> okay. Good. So, now we're moving to, the, to, to this book, the, the, my, my, latest, uh, my latest one. It uh, came out uh, a year ago last December, and uh, the title, uh, it needs to be explained, but I will let uh, to be explained, but I will offer no explanation at least yet. The title is The Old World Dot uh, A Life Repaired. And uh, it would be, well, uh, in, in fact, uh, it's a bit of a problem choosing some poems uh, from, uh, from, from this uh, small volume because uh, the older I'm getting, the more I'm keen on writing, uh, not separate poems one and another, but uh, 
sequences that are based upon a visible and a, a rather a tight structure. And, uh, well, of course, no human being is, uh, 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 no human being will bear listening to the whole sequence. Uh, but uh, I'll try to make some excerpts, uh, starting maybe with the uh, with the uh, poem uh, titled "The Body Returns," which is uh, dealing with the legacy of the World War One for 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 this time, and uh, uh, it it is meant to be. Well, uh, among the other things, it is meant to work as a as an homage or maybe a reply to younger Christensen's poetry uh, and to hers, uh, to her huge poetic sequences, the alphabet and it that are based one upon, uh, upon the letters of Latin alphabet. And the other is built uh, that the construction is made uh, is based on the Fibonacci figures and uh, uh, the way it is working gives me a point for endless interest. But uh, okay, so. Um, just a few, just a few excerpts of uh, 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 from this sequence. Originally, it is uh, it is starting from the last letter uh, of the Latin alphabet from Z, uh, slowly moving backwards to A, gaining more and more lines with every new fragment. Uh, so, Z. Комнату надо очистить, пространство надо прибрать. Why? Так говорит поэзия. Живущая в Канаде в женском теле по-английски, так она говорит. Once cleared, the room writes itself. X. Что делать дальше? Комната вычищена до блеска. Прибрана до кости, до костного мозга. Должна написать себя, никто никому не пишет. W. Где они? Где мужчины? Подобные арею, поднимавшие стропила, не вмещавшиеся во врата. Где их костный мозг, сладостные конечности? Где их зубы и языки? На какие элементы они разложились? Ви. Глубоко под землей в ее огородной клетке. Клетки продолжают делать новые клетки. Исходят яблочной пеной когда земля собирает свой урожай, подземными реками шарят в поисках устья, то, что было семенем, пробует себя семенами. Ю. Вечную мерзлоту обдает весна, как струя горячей мочи плавит лед, под льдом будоражат буквы желтые и зеленые. И вот, когда слепо шары и ветки водят по свету, поэзия, говорившая по-датски, Лежащая под землей, женская, ти, мертвая, как многие, почему-то живая, карамелькой она плавится за холодной щекой глинозема, и прав у нее не больше, чем у тех, кто лежит под другим кустом, кто все, что помнит, это свое отражение в плоском лице медной военной фляги. Слух истек, им нечего больше слышать. С. Там, где было ухо, теперь земля, обнимающая место не слуха. Там, где было рот, теперь усилие корней стать истоком роста. Мертвая поэзия говорит, она говорит, я пишу как ветер. Она, они, другие они, многие до и после лежат, ветра там нет. Что там есть? Почему им ветер? Разрой мертвую злую землю, потрогай мертвую песню. Под низким небом, говорит еще одна, жившая в той же Канаде, лежащая в чьей-то земле, с сентября 22 -го года зерно ее тела принесло, наверное, много плода. Под низким небом 
я видела тысячу марширующих Иисусов. Что они делали? Спрашиваем мы, стоящие на обочине. Они маршировали, они пели. Кирилл. Зимой 18 -го года в Петрограде поэзия перестает слышать что-нибудь, кроме постоянного шума, ритмического нарастающего гула. И если выглянуть в окошко, поля продлеваются, в них лежат и лежат и лежат. Затылки запрокинуты, языки застыли. Мы увидим метель, как тюлевая занавеска, делает знак. В комнате стало достаточно чисто. И, и тогда, и когда, принаравливаясь к отсутствию цвета и к пиксельному мельканию вещества и к оружейным выстрелам, доносящимся с перекрестков, где до событий торговали газетами и каждый пятый цветок отдавали бесплатно, смазывая товарно-денежные отношения молоком человеческой нежности, еще не имевшим цвета, приглядевшись, мужчина с его поэзией видит ясно, здесь присутствует кто. О, как если бы ветер, я пишу, как ветер, отрицал человеческое участие. Как если бы комната была выскоблена до костей, и что осталось после зачистки. Как если бы ухо мира, его огромная воронка, описанная по-русски в 1937-м, по смерти Пушкина, написана не Пушкиным, ловила и передавала одно и то же. Вот Блок и говорит, как матушка Гусыня, что в белом венчике изрос впереди Иисус Христос. Так и было. Но кто поверит гусям? Н. Лежат расстрелянные во врагах полных звезд и черемухи. Лежат в болотах, подобные стеблям, подобные рыбам в консервных банках. Лежат под берегами, под озерами, под автобанами, под пастбищами для коров свободного выпаса, под ногами овец, охотно дичающих, умеющих быть без участия человека, лежат под многоярусными парковками, под взлетными полосами аэропортов, где тонкий лед сцепляет пальцы травы, где синие огни расставлены разумно, где мощные вещи летают без наших рук, где мое тело, говорит, средний слой земли, ее средний класс, мертвый, не успевший родиться. Я сказал, говорит поэзия, и знает, что говорит. Я сказал, вы боги, и сыны Всевышнего, все вы, вы же падаете, как дураки, как обычные князья и полководцы, политики, аристократы, а также представители крупной буржуазии, как обычные смертные люди, словно нету ничего проще падения и развоплощения. Вы все время умираете, будто это нормальное дело. Не пора ли взять себя в руки? Не сделать ли усилия, говорит поэзия из-под земли, дыша в камышинку? Давай соберем это тело заново, ножки в Медведково, попка в Чертанове. Вечный огонь горит, пожирая павших, неучтенных, не найденных и пропавших, не отдавая ему эти клетки, клеточки, нервные окончания, капиллярные сеточки, ребристые неба, пух паха и прах пуха, нежные перегородки ума и слуха. Как мы с тобой соберем их на страшный суд? Кости твои не знали, что их спасут. Мешочки с семенем, все, что тело съело, железо за век, ставшие частью тела, части тела другого тела, лежащего здесь с прошлого века. Вместе они составляют нового, еще не существовавшего человека. Лежа на том столе, я слушаю звук пылесоса на этаже, я чувствую ветер над окраиной тела, и все, что во мне было, стоит, как армия, на самой границе с воздухом, будто мы еще можем начать и проиграть войну. Быстро и очень медленно. 
как умная собака. Сперва наклоняет голову, потом понимает, потом побежит к тебе. Душа проверяет свою коробочку, то свернется внутри, где трухая усталый бархат, то гладит сверху кожаные крышки. Все под тучей, синей бурой, роскошных хмурой тебя составляют заново. Там, как рыбу торговка, перебирают кости твои и мышцу твою, дорогие руки врача, и ты лежишь, не крича. И последнее отсюда, например, такое. Римлянка с бурей пшеничных волос, грубо собранных в груду, сидевшая у круглого фонтана, кому-то в телефон отвечая. Мужчина в кожаной куртке, на темном кожаном теле, делавший зарисовки в тетради грифелем карминного цвета. Мальчик в Саратове, старуха у кассы, продавец светящихся пластмассовых летающих машин. Я хочу быть каждым из этих людей. Я хочу спать с каждым из этих людей, ходить в их дома, как воздух, входить в их тела, как восточный ветер, трогать языком их круглые зерна, мочки ушей, голубые белки, белую шерсть от запястья до локтя, ребра, ключицы, лопатки, синяя ткань рабочего комбинезона, черное платье, в мелкий белый горошек все это неминуемо воскреснет. Все это неминуемо минует. Рука, похороненная на марне. Рука, похороненная под нарвой. Рука, лежащая в галицийских болотах. Пепел руки, не лежащий нигде. Все это еще вернется. И когда пойдем мы воскресать, целый лес конечности отъятых отчужденных, брошенных, неузнанных, зашумит у нас над головами, заторопится на место сбора, как бернамский лес на Дунсинан. И ноги, 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 одноноги, одиноги, ноги, ноги, одинокие, в истлевших сапогах и сапогах и сапогах, солдатиками, отбившимися от части, от части камни, а отчасти облака все эти ноги встанут при дверях трактиров, а костыли, как папские жезлы, отращивают прутики зеленые, а голые, безлюдые протезы бегут собаками за праздничной толпой, и как мешки с недавним провиантом, который съеден до последней крошки, лежит в земле уже ненужная поэзия. Вагончик тронулся, Дома на дачной станции синеют ставнями, и тополь весь как лесенка. Вот такое. А сейчас я, сейчас я извлеку немножко другое. То, что э, там было... And now I'll show you a couple of other uh, ones. Uh, some of them published, uh, some if not unpublished, mm, but uh, strangely, all three of them uh, sounds to me as uh, something mm, post-pandemic, even, even in spite of the simple fact that uh, they were written in the last October. And uh, all of them are dealing with the concept of a border, borderland, an uh, invisible obstacle between the past and the present, the present and the future, the uh, world of living people and that other outer world uh, with, uh, with this transparent borderland that is so important for at both the sides, I suppose. So uh, I'll read the, the first one. 
and uh, no further. Граница. Никто никогда не хочет уходить. Ночью, обманув сторожей, приходят, стоят под окном, ждут, чтобы позвали. Никто никого не хочет отпускать. Ночью, пока дети спят, оставляют своим на крыльце рюмку водки и что поесть, и долго стоят по ту сторону запертого окна. Ни тебе умереть как следует, ни воскреснуть. Незабвенные, с незабывающими, никак не умрут друг друга. Just a couple of seconds, I need to open the next file. Yep. Ночью, непонятные какие, видно диверсанты, перешли прозрачную границу, растворились в нашей темноте. Как мы их узнаем, подруга? Их никак от нас не отличить. Мы сами, бывает, ходим на потустороннюю сторонку, там, где пограничная речка, где костер горит, в тумане светит, где из раны откровенной хлещет бычья кровь нам греющие губы, речь развязывающая, как мешок с белыми куриными перьями. Перьями, ты говоришь, как скажешь. Мы давным-давно их обгладали, что осталось голо. Говорят, в раю ни мужей, ни жен, все голы, как ангелы на небе, если это так, то мы в раю. Мы в раю, в пятнадцатом бараке, на последней шконке. Мы не помним ни мужей, ни жен. Мы-то прибыли из-за границы, но забыли, что там. Мы с тобой обороняем шконку, делим передачку, насыщаем тощую подушку. На двоих едино белыми куриными перьями. Там за рекой высокий берег. Нам поэтому не видно, что там. Я бывала там, но не помню. Мы с тобою чиферим, подруга. По ночам друг другу лижем души. Вечером, идя по утрам, идем на построение. Мы еще не сучились, хотя и хочется. На запах теплой крови приползти к куму и пролиться искренним рассказом, ничего в себе не запирая. Жалко, что я ничего не помню. Говорят, оттуда ходят эти теплые, наполненные кровью и воруют ночью нашу память, жгут огни, уводят наших женщин за прозрачную границу. И только одна из них вернулась. Ты не помнишь, зачем вернулась. Если я начну смотреть за речку, кончи меня сразу, родная. А uh, one more poem dealing uh, with the past, with a tricky matter of memory, with different approaches, different attempts to owning memory and disowning it, and the border between memory and forgetting, and the whole discussion about which part of this duo is more is essential. And uh, one, one more poem about, about borders, uh, a love story of sorts. Вот граница на замке. Человек в своей тоске ищет перебраться, пробует стараться. У подруги в голове сам мертвец лежит в траве. Нечего стараться ко мне перебраться. Места нет в моем уму, 
Говорит она ему, наклоняя челку, Отвори защелку. Он на это не губу. Ветер ходит по лугу, Видно, берег дальний С полосы нейтральной. Мертвый ты или живой, Стань жених ли, стань травой, Белым ли, зеленым, Но определенным. С ним невеста, с ними бог. Ветер гладит пару ног, Задирает юбку, Охмуряет Юльку. Неразумная жена, Говорит в себе она, Будешь дальше сниться, Я взорву границу. Well, do we have more time for, for, for the last one? What do you think? Okay, uh, that's uh, uh, in a way, it is a title poem of, uh, of the whole book, uh, even if it has a different title, uh, but it, it, it refers to the, 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 the main one. Uh, and uh, the, the, this title is The Old the New. Uh, Starry Novy, which also serves as a reference to, to the Russian habit of uh, celebrating two New Year's Eves, the, uh, the <laughs> uh, regular New Year and the so-called Old New Year, Starry Novy God, uh, according to the old uh, revolutionary calendar. Сама не знаю, чего хочу то. Нового мира, новое небо и новую землю, где никто не уйдет обиженный, где ни воздыхания, ни печали. Бесконечная жизнь от края до края, и за краями тоже она же переливается в общую чашу, где средства труда принадлежат трудящимся, а блуд труда становится чистый лавмейкинг, а кто не хочет, читает Диккенса на скамейке, где травма, не успев даже возникнуть, обращается в кролика или в грозу, или нелепый бантик, отличающий тебя от других, не причиняя боли, где боль не болит, а удивляет, как незнакомый язык у тебя во рту, где мертвые воскресли, где вы, мои мертвые, уже воскресли, Вне помощи науки и культуры, не по Федорову, а как-то попроще, без лишнего понуканья, где кто был ничем оказался всем, и мертвый, не един в гробе, и мама, веселая, молодая, и я тоже все это вижу. Или, чтобы старый мир уже наконец подчинили, и все вернули на место, как было с самого начала. Потому что новый мир уже есть. Он толстый журнал на серой бумаге. А старый мир обходится без бумаги и выводит из-под земли свои деревья и подтыкает воздухом оконные рамы. И нет ни печали, ни воздыхания. Бесконечная жизнь от уха до уха. И за ушами, где я не вижу, она продолжает шуршать и смеяться. И мертвый не един в гробе, и ни один обиженный не помнит обиды, и ни один обидчик тоже все все забыли. И все, кто хочет, читают Пушкина от края до края, а Пушкин читает Диккенса или что захочет. И средства труда, как умные веретена, в руках у трудящихся воркуют, и вовсе даже никому не принадлежат, потому что нету не надлежит не при, только сплошное вместе, где все дыры заштопаны золотой, синей, синей, алой ниткой, где все сколы и трещины видны, и светится их изнанка, и дыры, которые мы в ком-то прогрызли, зарастают и процветают мягкими невидимыми цветами, и травма стала травой, и психоз психеей, и боль Болеголовым, и, быть может, общим футболом, где ноги мячи парения одно и то же, и все воскресли. Прабабушка в кресле, и пожилое кресло, 
сделанная из ротанга, поправилась и затянула утраты. И все, кто хочет, танцуют танго, а древние телефонные аппараты крутят прозрачными дырчатыми кружками и сияют когда-то съеденные риски и детский сад с праздничными флажками «Мама, я больше не вижу разницы между теми и этими, между новым и старым, между лево и право, но этот носок должен заштопать, а я не умею штопать, и эту дыру залатать» но умею ставить заплаты, пока новый и старый мир смотрят в зеркало друг на друга. Спасибо большое. Thank you, Masha. Thank you so much. It was absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. Thank you. And I'm sure that all hundred people that are watching you now are applauding wow. right now. Um, so uh, I think it's time to move to uh, Q&A to questions and uh, um, I suggest that, that questions or comments can be both in Russian and in English and uh, it's up to you which, which language to, to pick. So I, I repeat for, uh, for our audience that they may use Q&A function in the Zoom or chat in the uh, YouTube. YouTube. Uh, and while, while our friends and colleagues are posing their questions, probably I will ask, I will ask mine. Um, so I, 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 I read some of the poems that, that you just uh, read and uh, uh, some of them I haven't. And uh, the last ones about Granitz uh, and about sort of... Uh, Старый и новый мир, uh, they, 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 they really are very powerful uh, poems in my view. And at the same time, uh, of course, poet is not supposed to, to, to analyze uh, her poetry, but uh, in the earlier ones, especially in Vaina Zveri Zhivotnik, there was uh, this, this motif of the impossibility to distinguish it between those who kill and those who are killed, between living and dead, and you spoke about this yourselves. And, and here, this motif of indistinguishability uh, of these opposites um, is becoming even more prominent. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so we, we, we all are familiar with this sort of postmodernist dictum that that we need to deconstruct binary positions, that binary positions are evil, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, but, but in your poetry, uh, this indistinguishability between the opposites is uh, not a very much cheerful process. So am, I, am I mistaken? Uh, well, uh, for me, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very important question because uh the on the the answer uh for me is not a cultural problem uh it is it is uh it is something at the very core of my being i i'm deeply almost on a physical level against the very notion of choice between this and that uh i'm always trying to unify all the possibilities, and if it is a dichotomy, then uh, the, the only two possibilities, to make that, to transform them, to flex them into a unity that would have a possibility of further transformed life. And uh, of course, sometimes it is not an easy thing to do, and uh, sometimes it is uh totally impossible but still that's the way i'm built and that's what i'm trying to do every time i'm facing this challenge uh sometimes sometimes uh, uh sometimes the, the 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 question has an ethical framework and 
and a, and a huger metaphysical one. Uh, so I I don't have a, an exact answer, an an answer that would be uh, that would be built on a chain of uh, uh, of uh, logical arguments. Uh, but uh, I'm still I'm still struggling for that uh, impossible unity uh, and uh, trying to 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 go across the border or to to get rid of the border if that's possible. Thank you. So so we have uh, a few questions already. Uh, one is in Russian. Maria, как вам приходят стихи? Um, it is uh, well. It is always very, very different uh, with different poets as well as uh, with different poems. And uh, I remember uh, a number of different beginnings. Sometimes it is a, it is a, um, a sort of an emptiness, a musical form that you are slowly feeling with like a puzzle with uh, with uh, different uh, sounds, sentences. Uh, it, uh, it is, uh, in a way, it reminds me of a, uh, of a crow building a nest with, uh, with, 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 with twigs and, uh, and uh, tin and, uh, and moss and uh, whatever else. Uh, and uh, sometimes I'm starting with with an idiom with a couple of words, and then it is that the poem is moving itself further. So there is no 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 no, uh, no different answer. But uh, with me, it is I'm always writing mm, in in cycles and sequences, bigger or smaller. Uh, it's it, it had been it has been. The, the, this way since my uh, since my young years since I, I was 20 or even earlier and uh, so the process itself has a, has a distinct shape uh, it happens uh, maybe once in a year or two and it takes uh, a month uh, maybe a couple of months uh, of uh, intense writing and then it just stops, uh, and uh, that's quite uh, that, that, that's quite useful because I'm not doing much else when I'm writing. So it would it would be complicated to, to, to live on if I would be writing all the time. Thank you, uh, Masha. Вопрос от Сибилен Форестер. Hello, Сибилен. Несколько слов о роли других языков и роли слов, слов из других языков в ваших стихах. Uh, um, am I supposed to be right to be answering in English or in Russian? You may answer in Russian if you want. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, мне, мне просто, мне просто св свободнее будет здесь ответить по-русски, потому, uh, потому что русский язык так или иначе это такая многослойная коробка или шкатулка, в которой, ну, как в любом языке, да, заключено некоторое количество языковых слоев, и некоторые из этих языков, некоторые из этих языков, то, что называется иностранные, а некоторые из этих языков просто разные версии русского. И они все как-то взаимодействуют, сосуществуют, и работают друг с другом. Поэтому каждый раз, когда какое-то слово вступает вот в этот рапорт, вступает, как-то цепляется за другое, это имеет смысл не только прямой и семантический, но и культурный. Это всякий, всякий раз какая-то встреча нескольких разных историй. Ну и очень интересно как-то с этим иметь дело. А вот взаимосвязанный вопрос от Деби Маршалла. Деби, is there any particular non-Russian language 
that you feel captures the mood and rhythm of your poetry in translation better than any other. So. Well, I, I suppose uh, the, 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 that's a wonderful question, but I suppose I am not the one to answer because, well, uh, I'm a, 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 um, my English uh, a, a, a is faulty but, but, but workable, and uh, I do read and uh, sometimes write and uh, translate from German. Uh, so I can say that uh, uh, in my reader's experience, something, something that tiny miracle uh, happens when my stuff is getting translated into these languages with their own tensions, with their uh, own uh, ways of, uh, of uh, rising stakes or uh, or uh, being funny or uh, addressing the past in a number of uh, in, a, in, a, in a number of tiny uh, tiny tiny ways uh, and uh, my uh, my Italian is almost non-existent so uh, I would I would love well I, I, I love the way my uh, my, 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 my poems sound uh in italian but uh of course uh it is you know that that the, the, the paul Celan, uh, uh was using this uh, this term sprachgitter the 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 the, 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 the grid yep uh the, 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 the grid of the, the of the language uh uh Every time a person is reading a translation, it is an approach through this uh, through, through this grid. Everything is visible, but still you are not exactly able to to, 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 to do a hug. So yeah, for me the question is open, but uh, I am endlessly happy each time something is someone is translating my poem to some unbelievable other language. Uh -huh. One more question uh, from Stephanie Sander. Hello, Stephanie. Uh, tell, uh, does Tiela Vazrashaitsa mm -hmm. also connect to the way the Ukraine war is felt in Spolia and Vaina Zvirya Zhivotnik? Does the way that poem writes the First World War act, in other words, as a template for what will come in later wars? I suppose so, but maybe not all, not only the later wars, but the former ones as well, because uh, the, 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 the poem refers to, uh, to, to the, well, it was, it, it has started with, uh, with some poems uh, uh, written uh, in the times of, uh, or immediately after the First World War, uh, and uh, with the lines of Marjorie Picto about the marching, marching Christs. Uh, but uh, when it was unweaving itself, it became uh, a poem about uh, the very possibility of after war poetry. And after, and well, and uh, uh, in a way, it is also speculation on what is happening with poetry after death. And uh, is it useful, is it necessary? Or does it, since, say, does it die in order to give a new life to all the other things uh, except yourself? So uh, all the wars of the 20th century, as well as the Russian revolution uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, for instance, that is referring to Nabokov's poem uh, uh, about a possible comeback to Russia. Uh, so, so yes, uh, it is. The latest tours are, of course, present there too. Thank you, Masha. Uh, now a few questions from YouTube, uh, comments actually. Maria Sazani uh, wrote on uh, YouTube chat, beautiful new poems and phenomenal reading. Thank you, Maria Stepanova, and thank you, Harriman Institute. This is one of the most moving readings I've listened to this year. 
to this year. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thank you. Ян Пропштейн. Hello, Ян. Спасибо. Если говорить о поэтике, каково соотношение нарративности и фрагментарности в ваших стихах? Mm, I suppose that, uh, that uh, it is getting more and more fragmented and fragmentary uh, well, as time goes by. Uh, I was writing uh, a lot of narrative poetry in my early 30s uh, from the huge book length poems Praza Ivana Sidrova Vtaraya Proza to a number of, uh, well, Postmodern or postmortal or post something ballads that we were playing with the with the idea of uh, uh, writing narrative poetry, and uh, then something happened, and uh, I, I, I wouldn't uh, want to stress it too much, but I suppose that uh, this reality has a, a political layer because. Uh, the world around me was becoming more and more evidently dispersed, uh, more and more threatening. And uh, there is not, nothing solid about the reality I'm trying to deal with, is poetry as well as in regular life. Hey, thank you. Uh, a question from Helga Landauer. Меняется ли или продолжается ли книга после того, как она написана. Влияет ли на тебя законченный текст? Mm. I think that... Uh, mm. Yeah, but in a, in, a, in, a, in a bizarre way. Uh, I don't really like to... to well, uh, after the first period of mutual love, which lasts until the book is published and maybe a couple of months later, uh, I, I am trying to forget the old poems as, as quickly as possible. Uh, they are becoming not really empty, but um, again, it's a very physical thing. Uh, they don't belong to, to, to my body, to my articulation uh, mechanics anymore. And uh, uh, it, is, it is strikingly physical. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was well, almost forced, while reading something, I was almost forced to read some, uh, a couple of poems uh, from, uh, from, the, from, from the mid nineties. And uh, uh, I was desperate because I didn't remember anymore how to do that. Uh, you have to do, uh, it, it is almost like singing and your, your voice, your, your singing machine is uh, refusing to copy, to, to copy the, 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 the number it was doing uh, 20 years ago. Uh, so uh, I still recognize the poems I was writing uh, in uh, 2015, uh, maybe 2012 but it would be uh, quite hard to me to embrace the more early ones. Uh, I, I don't mean they are, well, uh, they are, well, bad or something. Uh, sometimes I'm stumbling upon them and, uh, well, uh, it's not so bad, but still uh, there's something alien in a way. They belong to, to the previous life or, or previous lives. Mm -hmm. So it's somatic too, right? Absolutely, uh, yes. Is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, here, here is a comment, uh, rather a compliment. I'm reading the Chinese version uh, of Memory of Memory, and it's really great. So you, wow. should, you, should, you should learn the Chinese version is as impressive as uh, Russian, and I hope as will be English. Uh, in, in connection with this comment, a question from... Our friend Ron Meyer, hello Ron. Я большой поклонник вашей книги за Стиви Смит. Как вы познакомились со стихами Смит и планируются ли другие переводческие проекты? I don't think I'm, uh, I'm uh, to plunge into the next uh, translator's translation project uh, 
or saying it in another way, I'm, I'm unable to predict it because uh, I'm not a translator in a regular sense. Uh, I never did it as a, as a, as a working project. Uh, I was uh, translating sometimes, uh, maybe once or twice uh, in, uh, in a lifetime, I was translating some poems I really love and want to to, to, to be uh, and want to uh, to try to do the same uh, or to answer in uh, well within uh, the Russian uh, uh, language frame. Uh, but it was different with uh, Stevie Smith because uh, she's not very popular in Russia. In Russia, uh, meaning she's practically unknown. Uh, Grigory Kroshko was translating maybe two or three, quite a few, not, not quite a few, but really a few of her, of her poems. And uh, the most famous ones, uh, not waving, but droning, uh, which to, to, to me doesn't belong to the number of, uh, of her best poems. And I was, uh, I was teaching in Berlin at Humboldt University, and there was an a huge library where I was spending the majority of uh, overall time that I was spending there. And I just accidentally taken the book from the shelf and opened it. And uh, there was something about the poem that was uh, slightly painful, as if I was, uh, uh, I was feeling a pain or, or experiencing some electric, tiny electric shock. And uh, uh, I began leafing through the book and uh, getting more and more surprised because I was unprepared to, to uh, this voice, to, 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 to this manner of addressing things. And uh, so I, uh, I've taken the book home. And uh, again, I didn't mean to translate it. I was just uh, rolling the lines along in, in, in my mind until uh, they were becoming more smooth, more poem-like than the next one, than the next one. And then I've counted the poems that were already done and uh, the number was more than 15. And then I felt that <laughs> uh, uh, presumably I should do something about it. But uh, it was a matter of love, nothing more. Okay. Uh, a question from Stefano Garzoni. Uh, привет, Stefano. Относится ли ваша проза к жанру проза поэта или нет? И вообще существует ли типологическая связь между стихами и, про, и, и прозой? Я думаю, что последний вопрос чисто философический, а может быть и касающийся ваших внутренних соотношений. А, так. Про прозу поэта. Я не совсем уверена, что она есть. То есть, что есть прозы поэтов, которые... Цветаева, да, например. Ну, бесконечно далеки друг от друга. Вот Цветаева, вот Мандельштам, и вот, например, Кузьмин, который в, в, в своих так называемых стилизаторских а, прозаических вещах, а, по-моему, приближается к предельному совершенству того, что вообще можно сделать на а, русском языке. Да? То есть записка Тилорция Пенсля – это невероятный то есть ну, вот есть какие-то полюса, вот здесь у нас, предположим, Платонов, а вот здесь записки Теворция Пенцля. И невозможно сказать, что гениально, и, 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 и то, и другое возможно. Это совершенно невероятно. Это проза поэта, хотя ничто в ней не наводит на мысль о том о мелодическом бормотании, да, которое принято проза поэта называть. А, ну и в наши времена, когда... А, когда но вообще э, съехали все границы между фикшн и нон-фикшн, между поэзией и прозой. Да? То есть ну, достаточно посмотреть, например, на книги, которые выходят в 
белые серии издательства Фицкаральда, да, а, которые ну, вот, вот, вот ровно в этой, на какую, какую-то эту новую землю осваивают. Она, безусловно, имеет отношение к поэзии, эта земля. Вот. А, про, 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 про типологические... Психологически не знаю. А мне чем дальше, тем больше кажется, что... что ну, а, а, нет, у меня была, а, б, 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 была на эту тему удобная, о, о, удобная отмазка или отмычка. В общем, формулировка, которая может здесь сработать. А, а вы помните байку про незрячего человека, который должен ощупывать корову или слона, да, ощупывать слона, слона. Да, чтобы, чтобы понять, что это за зверь такой. И важно было, с какой стороны начинать. Вот в случае прозы ну, человек медленно, но верно, автор, медленно, но верно пробирается от хвоста куда-то в сторону ушей. А в случае стихов человек просто находится внутри слона а, и описывает слона так, как его может описываться, описывать тот, кто наход, уже находится внутри. А, но слон, безусловно, один и тот же. Спасибо. Вопрос от Анны Хельберштадт. Маша, do you feel that the struggle or rather a choice between living in the present and cutting off the past as depressing and antiquated, or accepting both as a part of the world, is not only emotional, but also ethical? I don't think that the, the necessity... Uh, well, I'm not exactly sure that uh, uh, it, is a, it is a necessity, or it could be, uh, I could formulate it in a different way, Uh, it is something that is going to happen, but it is not necessary for us to hurry up with it. And uh, I'm meaning that uh, as, as someone who is, uh, uh, who is involved with the past so deeply that I don't really know if I will ever be able to get rid of it. I, 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 I would love uh, maybe to forget about the past and jump into something completely different. Uh, but I have to admit that, uh, that I am willing myself to, be, to get more interested in the future. I am trying to, to persuade myself to, to make myself love the, the invisibility, uh, the shapelessness, Uh, of the future, the number of options, uh, the challenge, uh, but uh, it doesn't really work. So I'm urging myself to start trying to love the future. And uh, it, it's a heavy construction uh, for, for, for a beginner. Uh, but still, uh, I suppose that uh, uh, it is impossible to get rid of anything. And uh, the more eagerly we are trying to, to lose something, to forget something, uh, the more it grows up. So I would just let it be. Um, may I complicate mm -hmm. then? So, so you wrote uh, yourself and uh, I cited this already about the addiction to the past. So when, when, when the uh, connection with the past uh, is not addictive when it's more or less healthy, if it is possible to use this metaphors. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that, that, that is something I wanted to answer at the beginning of our conversation when you were talking about the ugly side of contemporary Russia's uh, obsession with, uh, with the past. And uh, as someone who is always trying to unite uh, both the options, I wanted to insist that uh, uh, for me, it seems so unproductive uh, making or building up uh, an approach 
uh, a way, an attitude to the past, to the present, to 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 green apples, to to to, to anything, uh, forbidding oneself seeing the other side that is always present. So the ugly side of the past of our obsession uh, shouldn't uh, sh- uh, shouldn't uh, uh, make us forget about the uh, about the beauty of it. And uh, well, I suppose that's a that's a serious or well, maybe maybe a grown up way of dealing with things, uh, admitting that it has its uh, strong and weak points, and that we have to deal with the consequences of both. I see. Thank you. Uh, a question of a different kind. And I think that, that what you answered uh, to, to Anna's question also answers Leva Bramovich Zaks's question about напряженное uh, бытие в двух мирах. Мне кажется, это было об этом тоже. How did you decide to become a poet? Specifically, how did you choose this form of expression of others? I didn't have any choice. I didn't decide to become a poet. Uh, I am I am a victim of uh, of uh, of early uh, and loving education. My mother was uh, was uh, um, an admirer of poetry, uh, and she she had a wonderful, uh, rare uh, for the times library. But what was even uh, more important, she she was. Uh, shamed to sing me lullabies. Uh, she, 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 she had this feeling that she, 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 she is not really a good singer. And uh, so instead of singing to me, lulling me at night time, she was reading me poems, all the kinds of poems. And uh, so uh, I was reciting poetry much earlier, I suppose, uh, than I was able to read, uh, which was also quite, uh, quite, Early, so I didn't really have uh, this stage when when a person is deciding between this and that. Well, there was a uh, mm, uh, maybe a half a year where, where between four and five when I planned to become a pirate, but uh, after after that it was more or less uh, clear. And of course, being a pirate, being a poet is not mutually exclusive goals. Exactly, right. as as Eugene Stashevsky knows, yeah, well enough. So yeah, that's quite close to each other. So, so we have two interconnected questions here. One, uh, thank you for a deeply inspiring reading. I'm curious how you see the relationship between traditional forms and free verse in your work. Not that it has to be this or that, we already know. It is clear that your work often exists on a spectrum between these poles. I know that you have addressed this topic in the scholar cycle mostly as a matter of critical reception, but I'm curious how you see this form uh, is from the perspective of creation. And as I said, the interconnected question uh, from Marina Akimova. Спасибо. Как по вашим ощущениям слово с его значением одинаково или по-разному работает в регулярных и в более свободных размерах и формах? А мне кажется, что в русском языке а, практически невозможно писать свободный стих, а, не учитывая а, так или иначе весь опыт а, стихосложения регулярного. А, даже, если, да, да, даже если автор считает, что что регулярный стих не выглядывает, не проявляется, или что от него можно избавиться и зачистить ну, предложение, синтаксис, да, устройство стиха до некоторого такого гигиенического блеска, все равно так или иначе, хочешь ты этого или не хочешь, сам, сам ход языка то и дело сталкивает, выталкивает вот эти споли, элементы, 
его поэтической традиции или даже просто какие-то синтаксические, смысловые, звуковые ходы, которые принадлежат другим поэтам да, или относятся к определенной школе. Но мне кажется, что это, что это большое везение, что то, что в русском стихе не обязательно выбирать, да, что в нем это не так устойчиво, как, ну, как в англоязычной поэзии, mm -hmm. где все-таки, да, вот там, не знаю, предположим, да, Глен Максвелл пишет регулярный стих, а, а там, не знаю, Элис Освальд, ну, у нее, у нее бывают рифмованные, да, но, но, но все-таки в, в, в основном, да, это, это стих свободный, это разные, ra, разные вакансии. В русском, может быть, за счет такой пористости, вязкости самого языка, его уступчивости вот этой знаменитой, а, так или иначе даже да, да, даже, э, даже свободный стих, он в высокой степени ангажирован традицией. В более высокой, мне кажется, чем это происходит с английским стихом. Спасибо. А, вот два вопроса тоже взаимосвязаны, на мой вкус. Один вопрос от Натальи Георгиевны Полтавцевой. Можно ли сказать, что в вашей поэзии время становится пространством, и, продолжая вашу метафору, новый мир сменяется миром Божьим? А, а близкий вопрос от Полины Димовой. Could you talk more about your visceral experiences in your poems? What senses are activated when you write them and when you read them? You mentioned the tactile, the painful, the musical, the special, the emptiness that you feel. So I understand that that's not exactly the same questions, but they, they overlap slightly. Mm -hmm. uh... I wonder if I could really recollect uh, uh, the, the, the exact sensations uh, I was going through while, while writing, uh, maybe be, uh, simply because of the fact that I was so, so concentrated on, on the pure fact of writing that I maybe I didn't notice something. But uh, I would say that the main feature, the main, uh, the main thing that is characterizing the process is, wow, well, <laughs> the intensity, uh, which is oh, mm, 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 quite high, I suppose. And uh, the other thing, I, mm, I wouldn't dare uh, uh, to say that something is... Uh, transforming into anything else while in, uh, in, uh, in the space of uh, my writing. But uh, uh, what is essential and uh, quite important is, I suppose that's what I'm writing about or what I'm writing with, the process of transformation of something, morphing, moving into Uh, reshaping itself into something else, this metamorphosis of, uh, of, uh, of life that is melting into death, which is melting back into life, is uh, maybe one, maybe the question that, uh, that I'm trying to answer again and again all the time, every time I'm writing. Would you agree that uh, the space is becoming more important for you than, than the time? Uh, hmm. You know, uh, speaking frankly, I never was particularly mesmerized with this or that. Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 in, uh, I'm definitely in life with space because that's where all the living beings are, well, spaced. Uh, and uh, I have uh, nothing personal against uh, the time, uh, but uh, uh, for me, I mean, uh, the other duo is more valid, uh, meaning uh, life and death, and uh, and the after, uh, life and the aftermath, uh, death and the consequences and the aftermath again uh, and uh, I would just replace uh, 
uh, the first pair with, with, with the other one. Thank you. Uh, a number of questions about the interaction uh, or relations between poetry and prose in your work. At Andrea Ustinova, uh, у меня вопрос, будете ли вы продолжать писать эссе? Вот это замечательная проза поэта. От Юли Трубихиной, как взаимодействуют и взаимодействуют ли твои эссе и стихи, которые пишутся в один и тот же период времени? И еще один, из, из, мне кажется, тот же вопрос, mm -hmm. просто немного с другой перспективы. I would like to hear in English how you like expressing yourself in poetry versus prose, how you distinguish the need to do so. So basically, when do you want to write a poem and when do you want to write an essay? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, um, uh, it is a, it's a simple thing. Uh, uh, I am going to write uh, to write essays uh, because uh, I am constantly falling in love with with a person, with a story, with a with a book, uh, uh, and uh, my way of loving someone or something is uh, trying to understand what I do think uh, of the subject uh, besides uh, loving it. And uh, I never know what I think uh, uh, until I've written about it. And uh, so for me, it is a process of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, moving forward with my love life. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll be doing that. Marfin Kosnova делала это, как говорится. И будет, и будет Марфинка это делать. And uh, I, I suppose I never do it at the same time. Uh, uh, I never write essays, or almost never. I, I don't remember any essay I've been writing at the same time uh, with poetry. Uh, it just doesn't happen. Uh, and uh, I don't write poems so often, so... It is not an obstacle, uh, but it is completely different with 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 prose writing. In uh, uh, when it comes uh, to uh, writing a book, uh, and uh, maybe I'll do it uh, once more because I was I was enamored with the sensation of uh, working on, on something for a long time, getting completely immersed. I mean, I so envy you, the, 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 the academics who are, uh, who are subject to reading uh, about all the interesting things professionally. And uh, I mean, you're getting paid for it. And uh, and you uh, and you have all the uh, libraries and and, and stuff. Um, uh, uh, speaking seriously, uh, this this ability of concentrating completely on uh, researching something, then thinking it over, then writing it through, was something bring you for, for myself because because poetry is done in a different mode in, in a uh, it is endlessly the process is endlessly different and uh, I, I I really liked this other way and uh, I will uh, I, I would love to to try to do it again uh, just because of the joy of it just for the joy of it Thank you, thank you, Masha. Um, I, I would uh, allow myself to paraphrase one of the questions that we received on YouTube from Andrea Cvetic. Uh, so she she recalls a uh, uh, famous phrase uh, ascribed to Mandelstam that that uh, Russia is the last country where they value poetry; they they, they kill for it, right? Um, so, do you think that the situation has changed? In my feeling, it did. It does, right? Uh, and is it better or worse for poetry? Not for poets, maybe, but for poetry. 
Well, uh, um, uh, I have to say that I I deeply opposed uh, to any to any uh, idea that, that that is forcing someone uh, to die for the sake of something. Uh, artists to die or to or to or to kill or to get killed to make their art better. I don't think that it really happens. Uh, for me, it is too romantic and uh, uh, well, too, too just too simple to be to, to be true. And uh, I don't think that uh, the fact that uh, uh, no one is ready to kill for poetry uh, made contemporary Russian uh, poetry uh, much worse. In fact, I would say that uh, it is uh, in a surprisingly good shape now. And uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, the, the state's attention has now turned uh, to the visual arts, uh, mainly to, to cinema, and uh, surprisingly theater. And we know from the tragic fate of uh, Theater Doc and uh, its founders, uh, Mikhail Ugarov and Ilyana Gremina, who were practically, well, not killed, but they were endlessly uh, persecuted um, was it the right? Uh, they were harassed. Uh, harassed, yeah. harassed. Yeah, there was uh, and the harassed. Yeah, harassed. Yeah, uh, until the point where they uh, died one after another in the course of a few months. Uh, and I wouldn't dare to say that this uh, strange value that the state was adding to the performances and, uh, uh, and plays of theater doc uh, was a necessary thing to do. In fact, they would be better, more happy, more productive and alive if they would just leave them alone. So I don't think that, uh, that repressions are a good ground for creating something. Uh... Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I, I think that that uh, we we have number of compliments uh, uh, which which you may see on YouTube and um, uh, and also question answers. Uh, but I, I think that that we have to stop this process because it can continue forever and i really feel that that we have abused you because you were working hard for almost two hours masha you, you're closing the camera uh, i just <laughs> went to read all the compliments predictably okay. uh, so thank you so much and uh, i think that we had a chance to to spend two hours with with one of the most wonderful poets living and working in Russian language today. And I hope that we can, we will have the chance to continue this interaction when uh, Masha comes to New York. Uh, and we hope and we pray that it would happen sooner rather than later. And thank you to, to everyone who was with us during this uh, most exciting conversation, most exciting reading. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was wonderful and I was happy being with you. Thanks.